United States Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin says he's committed to a constructive and stable relationship with China. He's in Singapore as the first member of Joe Biden's cabinet to visit the region. Southeast Asia has emerged as a key arena as the U.S. and China tussle for influence. Now, these differences and disputes are real. But the way that you manage them counts. We will not flinch when our interests are threatened, yet we do not seek confrontation. So let me be clear. As Secretary, I am committed to pursuing a constructive, stable relationship with China. Mr. Austin has also met Singapore's defense minister and has called on Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong. He says uh, the U.S. is committed to a strong presence in the Indo-Pacific. Next, he will visit Vietnam and the Philippines. Jeremy Coe joins us live for more on this. Uh, Jeremy, the defense chief says he's committed to good relations, but he didn't mince words on the South China Sea. Yes, indeed, he didn't mince words on the South China Sea. And for that reason, his speech here in Singapore is not likely to go down well in Beijing. He said that Beijing's uh, claims to the vast majority of the South China Sea has no basis in international law. And he said that that assertion threats on the sovereignty of many states in the region. And he also said that, unfortunately, Beijing's uh, unwillingness to resolve disputes peacefully, as well as to respect the rule of law, doesn't just... Uh, uh, isn't just limited to the, the water, it's also on, on land as well. He says that America has seen aggression uh, against uh, uh, India, destabilizing military activity and other forms of coercion against the people of Taiwan, and genocide and crimes against humanity, against Uyghur Muslims in Xinjiang. And so despite what he said earlier about America being committed to a constructive and stable relationship with uh, Beijing, this speech here in Singapore is likely to anger Beijing. Now, his speech here today comes just a day after his uh, colleague, U.S. Deputy Secretary of State Wendy Sherman, had a tense summit in, the, uh, in Tianjin, the uh, a city on nor a port city in northeastern China. Now, ahead of her speech, uh, China had said, uh, China's foreign minister had vowed to uh, teach the U.S. a lesson. And he also said that China will not accept any country's self proclaimed uh, superiority. Now, that visit was widely seen as a preparatory visit for a potential summit between President Xi Jinping as well as President Joe Biden uh, like, later this year, likely during the G20 summit in uh, October. Uh, but hopes for that summit have now uh, faded somewhat after the tense meeting in, in Tianjin. Uh, following the talks, China has blamed the U.S. for what it called a stalemate in bilateral relations. And he also accused Washington of demonizing uh, Beijing. And subsequently, following the talks, the White House has also uh, confirmed that plans for a long-awaited meeting between the two leaders uh, were not discussed during the, uh, the tense meeting in uh, Tianjin. So it's likely that we all will not see a thawing of tensions between the two powers anytime soon, uh, despite what President Biden has, has tried to do, uh, which he, he's tried to seek a calmer a uh, calmer footing with Beijing after a very testy relationship between uh, Beijing as well uh, and his predecessor, uh, President Donald Trump. Now China aside, Jeremy, there are also plans to strengthen the U.S. partnership with Southeast Asia. Yes, indeed. This is the first visit to Southeast Asia by a top official from the Biden administration. And it's, it's seen as a, a much awaited affirmation of the importance of Southeast Asia as well as ASEAN uh, within the uh, Washington's Indo Pacific uh, strategy. Now, ahead of the trip, uh, Pentagon press secretary has said that the visit will demonstrate the importance the Biden administration places on Southeast Asia as well as ASEAN as an essential part of the Indo Pacific strategy. And as you know, you know, Southeast Asia has emerged as a key arena of competition between the U.S. and China as they tussle over many areas from uh, military to uh, commerce as well as uh, trade and geopolitics as well. And Biden is, is seeking to build a coalition here in Asia to counter what, uh, what the U.S. sees as China's growing influence. 
Now, this is a pivot away from the Trump administration's uh, unilateral approach. Under the Trump administration, uh, analysts uh, and even countries in this region had questioned uh, the importance that Washington places on countries in this region. They had accused uh, Washington of neglecting this region during the Trump administration. Now, among other things, many ambassador posts in Asia, uh, Southeast Asia were not uh, filled and they sat empty for much of the Trump administration. And Mr. Trump himself uh, did not uh, skip the ASEAN summits here uh, for three times in a row. And this is, you know, turning the page. Uh, Mr. Biden has said that no more. He's going to place a stronger importance on countries in this region. And Mr. Austin's speech here today ties into that. His speech is titled The Imperative of Partnership. And he says that they're moving to combine their combined presence in the Indo-Pacific with other close partners as well as allies. And he said that the United States and the region are more secure and prosperous when they work together. And he also said that uh, America will be right at your side just as his old friend would. All right, many thanks. Jeremy Coe there reporting.